What happens in Hamlet? The tragedy of Hamlet, Prince of Denmark, is the original title of the play we know as Hamlet. The character was inspired from Hamlet, a character from a Scandinavian legend. This five-act play is an example for a revenge play. Yes, revenge. Revenge has been a driving force for several stories that have entertained us. Revenge is a dish best served cold. The genre of the revenge tragedy was established in the Elizabethan theatre by Thomas Kidd with his play The Spanish Tragedy or Hieronimo is Mad Again. Many elements of the Spanish tragedy such as the play within a play used to trap a murderer and a ghost intent on vengeance appear in Shakespeare's Hamlet as well. Critics also believe that there exists an earlier version of Hamlet titled A Hamlet. Some believe it was written by Shakespeare himself and some say Kid might have written it. I mentioned a ghost. Whose ghost? Hamlet is a play about the Prince of Denmark figuring out a way to exact revenge from his uncle Claudius for having murdered his father King Hamlet. Yes, Prince Hamlet's father is also known as Hamlet. He becomes this ghost. This is a play which dives deep into the minds of its characters and poses several questions at the audience. Quite appropriately, it begins with a question. Who's there? Bernardo the guard asks this as he enters to relieve another guard, Francisco, of his duty. They are on the battlement of the Elsinore castle. Battlement? It's a parapet or a barrier at the end of the wall. They usually have regularly spaced squared openings for shooting through. What is the significance of showing these guards? Denmark, the country, is under threat of an invasion from Prince Fotenbra of the nearby nation of Norway. So Shakespeare sets up a threat element from both outside and inside the castle. What is happening inside the castle? Horatio and Marcellus also enter the scene. They talk about the appearance of the ghost of King Hamlet. Yes, the king has died and Claudius, his brother, is the new king. Claudius, Hamlet's uncle, married Hamlet's recently widowed mother, Gertrude, just two months after the death of her husband. This is a scandal. Something is rotten in the state of Denmark and Hamlet is frustrated at what has happened. Three major issues are worrying Prince Hamlet. What are they? In the English tradition, marrying the husband's brother is considered as incestuous. It is like marrying a blood relation or a close relation. It is a sin. Hamlet also feels disgusted as he believes that just two months is too short for mourning. So did his mother commit a sin? At a later stage in the play, we see how Hamlet feels about this. And he says a very famous statement. Frailty, thy name is woman. Frail means weakness. It could be weakness of the mind as well. Frailty could mean moral weakness or liability to yield to temptation. And the third point, to top it off, Claudius, his uncle, is now the king of Denmark. Hamlet continues to mourn for his father's death and laments his mother's lack of loyalty. When Hamlet hears of the ghost from Horatio, who is his friend from his school days, he wants to see it for himself. The ghost appears and informs Hamlet about his murder and asks him to take revenge. The ghost informs Hamlet how Claudius killed him by pouring poison into his ear while he was sleeping. With this, we get another conflict. Hamlet has been given the responsibility of avenging his father by killing his stepfather, who is Claudius. 
Claudius is Prince Hamlet's uncle and now his stepfather as he has married Gertrude. So Hamlet has to kill in a way his father. Can you kill an elder, your stepfather? For committing such a deed, you need to be sure. Claudius is also the king of Denmark. Hamlet is doubtful about the authenticity of the ghost as well. So he delays taking revenge, trying to convince himself to look for clues and be sure of the evidence against Claudius. Here begins the procrastination. Procrastination means the act of delaying or postponing something. Procrastination is the tragic flaw of Hamlet. A series of events happen in which we find Hamlet delaying the inevitable. This thought of having to take revenge makes him ostracize the people around him. He is doubtful of everyone, distrusting. A kind of paranoia sets in to Hamlet. He begins to act as a madman in the hope of disarming people and get to know what truly lies in their hearts. Claudius summons Guildenstern and Rosencrantz, old friends of Hamlet, to find out what's got into him. We do that, right? parents do that. When their children are not doing well in their studies, they tend to call their uh, friends and ask what they're doing. How does he do in the school? Similarly, Claudius calls Guildenstern and Rosencrantz and asks them to keep an eye on Hamlet. But Hamlet understood that they, are, they have been sent as spies. We also get to know that Guildenstern, Rosencrantz, Hamlet and Horatio were students of the University of Wittenberg. This is also the same university where a professor of moral theology by the name of Martin Luther had worked. He wrote the 95 Thesis or Disputation on the Power and Efficacy of Indulgences in 1517. And thus the roots of the Protestant Church were laid by Martin Luther. Hamlet does not reveal anything to Guildenstern and Rosencrantz and comments what a piece of work is man. Another famous statement from the play. They inform Hamlet that they have come with a group of traveling actors. Hamlet thinks of a plan to prove that Claudius had in fact murdered his father. So Hamlet asks the actors to stage a play called The Murder of Gonzago and includes scenes that mimic the murder of Hamlet's father. So he hopes that by staging a play in front of the king and the queen and then having a scene in which one of the characters murders this Duke Gonzago by pouring poison into his ear, he can find out if Claudius had in fact done the same deed. So when if Claudius sees this, there might be some kind of a change in his expression and Hamlet by observing this expression, when Claudius sees this scene being played on stage, Hamlet might be able to convince or get proof that Claudius was in fact guilty. Hamlet hopes to observe Claudius's expression when he sees the deed to confirm his guilt. This is a play within a play. Just like Halal Love Story where you had the making of a movie shown as a movie. Hamlet hopes to catch the conscience of the king using this play. So when Claudius asks what the name of the play is, he doesn't say Murder of Gonzago. He says the play is named The Mousetrap because he's going to catch the conscience of the king. The Mousetrap is also the name of a long-running murder mystery play written by Agatha Christie, which began performance in London's West End Theatre in 1952 and ran continuously until March 16, 2020 when the stage performances had to be discontinued due to the COVID pandemic. Polonius is the chief counsellor of the king and has a daughter named Ophelia and a son named Letus. He asks his daughter to return the love letter sent by Hamlet as he feels Hamlet has gone mad and might not honour her. 
Ophelia and Hamlet, they are in love. But Polonius does not want his daughter to be near Hamlet as he feels something fishy about Hamlet. So Polonius asks Ophelia to return the love letters that Hamlet had sent her earlier. So Claudius and Polonius, they hide and watch how Hamlet might react to this. So Ophelia goes to hand over Hamlet's belongings, the letters. We see Hamlet alone and delivering the most famous soliloquies in English drama, beginning with the dramatic line, to be or not to be, that is the question. A soliloquy is a monologue addressed to oneself, thoughts spoken out loud so that the audience can hear what the character is thinking. They are not addressed to the other actors on the stage. It's just the thoughts of the character spoken out loudly. It's a monologue. One person speaks this. Hamlet contemplates death and suicide, bemoaning the pain and unfairness of life, but acknowledging that the alternative might be worse. This scene is called the nunnery scene. Why is that? After the soliloquy, Ophelia enters and tries to give Hamlet's letters. He reacts violently, accusing her of immodesty and utters the line, Get thee to a nunnery. It could mean Ophelia might be better off being a nun and shut herself off in a convent as she has tried to break up with Hamlet. Nunnery can also mean a brothel. Hamlet might still be in love with her and out of sheer jealousy, he uses this abusive word. He is distrustful of everyone at this stage. His reaction convinces Claudius that Hamlet is not mad for love. Shortly thereafter, the court assembles to watch the play Hamlet has commissioned. When Hamlet's mousetrap is presented, Claudius is clearly disturbed and he leaves the scene. This convinces Hamlet of Claudius's guilt. But does he kill him? No. Hamlet follows him and sees Claudius praying. Maybe he is confessing his crimes. But it was a missed opportunity for Hamlet. He doesn't kill him then. He thinks that if he kills Claudius now, that Claudius might atone for his sins and he might go to heaven because he's praying. And when you kill somebody when, who is praying, God might forgive him his sins. He doesn't want that. He wants Claudius to feel the pain and get punished properly. So he procrastinates. Meanwhile, Polonius talks to Gertrude about Hamlet's strange behavior. When Hamlet enters the room, Polonius hides behind the curtain. He doesn't want Hamlet to find him in Gertrude's room. Hamlet then begins to attack Gertrude, abuse her and seeing Gertrude cry in pain, Polonius who is behind the curtain makes a noise. It's quite instinctive and Hamlet thinks that it is Claudius who has hid behind the curtain. He takes his saber, his sword and pierces the curtain. Polonius drops dead. Then Hamlet jokes with Claudius about where he has hidden Polonius's body and the king, fearing for his life, decides to send Hamlet away to England. It's a kind of exile. Now Claudius also knows that Hamlet has found out his secret. So he doesn't want Hamlet anywhere near Denmark. So he sends him away. He sends him away along with Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. And he hands over a letter, a sealed letter, which is to be handed over to the king of England. Now, what does the letter contain? The letter contains clear instructions asking the king of England to execute Prince Hamlet the moment they reach England. We do not know if Rosencrantz and Guildenstern were aware of the contents of the letter. Maybe he, they were just asked to escort Hamlet. But Hamlet guesses Claudius' plan and rewrites the letter during the journey, instructing the executioner to kill 
both Rosencrantz and Guildenstern instead. Their ship on the way is attacked by pirates and Hamlet somehow negotiates with the pirates and returns to Denmark. Hamlet had professed his love for Ophelia long back but now Hamlet is acting all strange as he has revenge in his mind. He mistreats Ophelia and tries to drive her away. Ophelia loses her mind completely when she hears about the death of her father and with consistent hurtful words said by Hamlet she goes into a state of hallucination and is wandering about the Elsinore castle. She finally drowns in a river. This loss seriously affects Hamlet as he loved Ophelia. He goes to the graveyard along with Horatio and talks of life and death. He sees a grave digger who exhumes a skull. Hamlet identifies it as belonging to the court jester Yorick. The sight of Yorick's skull evokes reminiscence by Prince Hamlet of the man who apparently played a role during Hamlet's upbringing. Alas, poor Yorick, I knew him, Horatio, a fellow of infinite jest, of most excellent fancy. Hamlet then sees a group of people arriving. As luck would have it, here comes a funeral procession. They are bringing Ophelia's body. On seeing Ophelia's body, he realizes how much he loved her. Laetus is with the group. They get into a scuffle. Laetus, the brother of Ophelia, vows to avenge her and the death of his father. Claudius sees this as an opportunity and calls for a duel between Hamlet and Laetus. He instructs Laetus to apply poison on his blade. As a backup, he poisons the wine cup to be given to the victor in case Hamlet wins. Gertrude, who is now aware of Claudius' evil nature, drinks the wine, sacrificing herself for her son during the duel. Hamlet kills Laetus but gets struck by the poison blade. Hamlet then kills Claudius. Knowing fully well that he is about to die, Hamlet declares the Norwegian prince Fortinbra as the next heir of Denmark and dies in Horatio's arms, proclaiming, the rest is silence. Prince Fortinbra arrives victorious from his Polish campaign and declares to take over Denmark and orders a royal funeral for Hamlet. We are informed by the ambassadors that Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead. Interestingly, Tom Shepard wrote an absurdist play titled Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are Dead, which was staged in 1966. This was an example for meta-theatre. Meta-theatre? Meta-theatre describes the aspects of a play that draw attention to its nature as drama or theatre, or to the circumstances of its performance. You will have characters directly talking to the audience and narrate how this play came about. So there's an interaction between the, the, the actors and the audience. This is what Meta Theatre is all about. With this, we wind up our session on Hamlet. To read or not to read Hamlet, that is a question you must ponder.